good day to you. My name is Maria Konjelska and this is Poland Daily Culture. And we continue our philosophical discussions on the edge between literature and philosophy because we were talking about Stanisław Lem and we continue this discussion. Here with us in the studio is Maria Konjelski. Thank you very much for coming. Thank you for inviting me to your program again. And we've talked about Stanisław Lem as a philosopher, not only as a writer, which of course he was, very strong mind, rich mind, who wrote also a lot about technology, the development of science. And we talked about his work and called Sex Wars. And right now another essay, which is not popular, which is called Provocation. Yes? Yes. The, the, there was a time when Lem realized that he has more ideas and if in mind that could be outspoken if he is going to write uh, complete books about them. So, so there is not enough time for him to write about everything what he wants to write, yes? Exactly. So he decided that he will be writing, writing from this moment on the prefaces to books, uh, non-existing books, the books he has in mind, and that he will provide for a summary in form of a prefaces or summaries. Of That's a words. way of doing it, keeping That's, it short. <laughs> <laughs> That's very interesting, also from a literary point of view. This is something new, to write uh, summaries or prefaces to non-existing books as if those books Existed. have already been written by somebody else. And he wrote about many things. One of the most pacifying texts is called Provocation. It was published in Polish, of course. It was published in Germany, where Lem was discussed very extensively. Nobody wrote a single word about provocation, because provocation is, um, in my opinion, the deepest uh, metaphysical analysis of the phenomenon of the Holocaust that has ever been written. And we have to mention that Stanisław Lem uh, was a uh, he, he was of Jewish, Jewish origin. He was uh, is somehow a survivor, maybe not a Holocaust survivor, but definitely he was to be executed. Miraculously, he survived uh, following the a German uh, soldier the, let him decision go. of of a German officer who surprisingly decided to spare just him and let him escape from the massive execution he, he witnessed, he experienced on his own. He had to hide himself being in Lvov uh, because he was threatened by, by the Holocaust. And he considered this problem thoroughly because when we talk about the Holocaust, there is no natural explanation why Jews were attacked and eliminated by Germans because there is no naturalistic explanation to this. In German historiography, let's say, in, in, in philosophical analysis of history, there are two attempts. One is naturalistic that says that we needed uh, this space, uh, Lebensraum, so in order to provide for this, we decided that we have to eliminate Jews, which does not hold water because this could bring Germans nothing in naturalistic terms. There were times. not enough Jews in the world, to be honest. It, it was not the case. And the other is that there was some other reason. And the Lamb says, yes, there was a reason. So if you read, the, for instance, Rauschning in his talks with Hitler, which are true in a sense that they reconstruct the reasoning of Adolf Hitler, you can see that Hitler hated Jews not because of some mystical power in economics uh, or any other reason. But the main reason was that Hitler wanted to construct a nation of uh, superhumans, yes, the, the Übermensch. What, this was a mass manifestation of Nietzscheanism in, in a massive scale. The Nietzscheanism itself is uh, very elitarian. Yes, so it was a little bit deprivation or twisted uh, form of Nietzscheanism. Yes, it was transformed from Nietzscheanism. But what Hitler hated absolutely was a consciousness based on the commandments. 
existence of Jews and then the Christianity derives from Judaism limited this ancient power of the winner to do absolutely at will what they want with those who are conquered. And this was the most important reason that Hitler decided to eliminate Jews. Lamb writes openly that first, elimination of the Jews was a very personal matter between German nation and Jewish nation. He highlights what is opposing to um, today's propaganda, that Germans never used other nations to eliminate Jews only in absolute necessity, because they believed this is their moral obligation to eliminate Jews from planet Earth, because in fact, they wanted to eliminate the presence of God from our civilization. And the Jews and existence of Jews, who are still perceived as the chosen nation, are the confirmation of the existence of God. So they wanted to hit God himself, but they could not commit this crime, let's say, against God. So they decided to eliminate Jews, they eliminate them physically by blood, and to take place of Jews as a chosen nation, as a self-made chosen nation, that is not bound by any type of covenant and moral limits, that decides absolutely on themselves on what is good and what is evil. This is what we were talking recently. And Lamb says very strongly that the act of Holocaust is the deed of counter-redemption. By committing Holocaust, Germans committed counter-redemption, eliminating themselves from God's covenant forever. Well, this, this is a very strong statement. And of course, it's hard to say because we as Christians, we say that God exists in every human being, in every soul. In, uh, even in the souls of the Nazis, there uh, existed uh, Jesus and, and God. So it's, um, it's a huge question, of course, but that's a statement of Stanislaw Lamb. This is what Lamb states. He again puts into the light the most difficult problems, the most difficult questions, and puts them in a very open way and invites us to discussion. And this discussion is continuing, of course, until today, because we still struggle with the topic of Holocaust, good and evil, subjective and objective. And we'll leave you with those questions. And thank you very much for watching Poland Daily Culture.